it real. Get hired at Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. Now, let's join the Culinary Arts Division for Capstone Cooking, a fine dining experience featuring outstanding culinary students. Their Capstone project is to share with you the joy of preparing and presenting a delicious culinary creation. Today's presenters are Jamie Sharp, Onita Murray, and Joseph Murray. My name is Joseph Murray. I'm here with the OSU IT Culinary Arts Department. We're here today to show you two demonstrations. Our first demonstration is going to be Jamie who will show you how to decorate a cake with fondant and icing and then our second demonstration will be Onita and she will show you how to bake chocolate chip cookies. So now we're going to start with our first demonstration. Hello, my name is Jamie Sharp and I'm with the Culinary Arts Department at OSU IT. I will be showing you how to decorate a cake with fondant, buttercream, and simple techniques. Today I have a simple white cake that I baked off. It's a three inch round and I leveled it off the top and then flipped it over onto a cardboard cake round. I'm going to take my slicer and I'm going to simply take and go make just a simple cut right around the edge like this as I turn the cake until I meet back up with my edge. And as I meet back up, it'll sl slowly slide into the cake, which will give me an even kill all the way across the cake. Then I can lift the top piece off, and I have an even piece. I will then take my buttercream icing that I have pre-made with powdered sugar, butter, a little vanilla, and a little bit of cream. This is my little recipe that I've made myself so that I could use buttercream underneath fondant. Right now I'm damming the cake so that I could put the other piece back on top of it. And it's okay to get a little bit extra in there because you want to kind of seep it out so that you can ice, ice the sides of it. As long as you get this part even, your cake should be even. Okay, I'm going to take my top piece, slide it back on, make sure it's still even here, and then we'll take our small spatula and add some more buttercream right back on top. You're going to smooth out your top first. This right here is called a crumb coat, or as you've seen on TV, they actually call it a dirty ice. And what this does is prevent any crummage of the cake and also makes a nice even base so that when you put the fondant on, it's even and doesn't have any lumps in it. You don't have to have it thick. You want it pretty thin. Then you're just going to take all the excess and just smooth out your edges here on the sides. Guys, I know I'm taking a little bit of time here, but it doesn't take much time once you get the hang of things. And one of the most important things that I have found is the offset spatula that I'm using in my hand today and also the rotating cake stand. It makes a world of difference when you're doing cakes. If you notice as every time I move around the cake I spin the cake stand. Not only did it help me when I sliced my cake in half but it helps me to keep my icing completely nice and smooth. And remember all we're doing is getting a nice crumb coat on this cake. All right, we are just about ready to play with the fondant. Smooth out one more little piece here, and then we're going to grab that fondant. All righty. 
We're going to scoot this over to the side. Let me wipe off my hands. When I'm working with fondant, I like to make sure that my surface is very, very clean because fondant, especially white fondant, will pick up every little piece that you have on your surface. I always like to wear gloves when I'm working with fondant, especially when I want to color my fondant. Um, obviously, coloring can color your fingers. So today we're going to go, since I have red and white icing, we're going to go ahead and go with, let's go with a blue. We'll make it all pop out. First of all, we want to knead our fondant to a nice pliable state. And the way you knead is you just kind of rotate and push with your palm. And why you need this is because you need to get the elasticity to start happening. Makes it very pliable and soft. That way when you go to put it on your cake, it doesn't break or crack. If it gets too sticky, you can add a little cornstarch and then it won't stick to your surface. Okay, I think we're ready now. I think we're going to have fun with this one and we're going to add a little bit of blue. I'm going to make a marbly effect, which is one of my favorite things right now because it's so popular in everything that I've seen on TV. So, might as well stay up with the times. And we're going to throw a little bit of red in there. And if you notice, I just kind of swatted it on the, the fondant itself. I'm going to fold one in, in, pull it, put another piece in, and just pull the fondant. And that way it kind of stretches the colors into it. And then you just start to knead it again. And then we'll be able to roll it out. I think we're ready now. So now we're just going to take the gloves off. And we're going to pull this into a ball. And I like to take it and kind of lay it around like this into just a nice little ball. This is cornstarch that I have. Spread a little bit out on your board. Press it down just a little bit to get kind of some of the lumps out of it. And you want to start rolling it around. It really likes to stick because remember, it is sugar. The one thing about fondant is you really have to get, it's real hard to find the right consistency of the thickness so that you don't have crackage in the cake. But then it also doesn't have, then it's not too thick. Because when you're at a competition and you're judging, when a judge comes and judge something for you, they're going to judge on how thick your cake is, or how thick your fondant is, what the technique you used on the fondant, how well you put it on your cake, once I get to this point, I like to kind of move it around a little bit, and then you just kind of push it. It's 
it's really important that you uh, work pretty fast once you have fondant out and try not to rub it with your fingers because it will dry it out. Once you get a big enough piece that you think is going to fit your cake, always leave extra room so that you can have room to work with. Once you pick it up, try not to poke your fingers in it. Then you're going to, this is a small cake, so I can just lay it on one piece. Lay it on like this. You're going to start from the top, work your way around the top of the cake with your hand so that it, there's no air bubbles in the cake. Then you're going to start with one side. Come around the side and look. I'm using this nice cake turner to keep it moving where I don't have to continue on around or move the cake. So we get here, I'm going to cut as I go right around that cake board so I don't get any air pockets. If you get an air pocket, just poke a hole in it with a toothpick or the end of your knife. What you're doing when you're doing this is you're actually stretching the fondant down the cake. You can reuse this fondant, so don't throw it away. It can still be colored a dark blue or purple. One thing we are taught here at OSUIT is uh, how to control our cost. And fondant is, is kind of expensive, so I try to make the most of it. is my fondanted cake. If it gets a little icing on the fondant, it doesn't hurt it. It's just buttercream. You can mix it right back in. I like to wipe down my surface so that I have a nice clean surface to work with. So if you see, you've got a really nice marbled effect with the fondant, and it didn't take me that long at all. So, we have some red piping icing, which is just another buttercream, simpler to this, just colored red. Um, and it just has a round tip on it. Um, you can get tips in all different kind of thing, in all different technique styles, however you want to put it. There's books all out there. Um, what we've learned here is all of our basic type, uh, piping techniques. Um, and today, um, I'm just going to show you just some simple little techniques on how to just trick out a cake for just a simple little birthday party, or if you're just wanting to do like a little get together at your house. And right now, I'm just doing a dot and then a squish, and a dot and a pull. You can actually flavor these icings if you want, any flavor you want. You can add almond, you can add chocolate flavorings, you can add strawberry flavorings. Um, with buttercreams, it's almost endless. Okay, so I showed you that one. We'll switch tips and I'll show you a couple different ones real quick. That's personally one of my favorites because it's really easy. You could actually take the star tip if you wanted to. And just do, 
You don't want to ever overfill your piping bags or they're just really hard to hold on to. I like to support one in the back of my hand and then hold on like I'm writing with a pencil in the other hand. But that's what your star tip would look like right there. So you just don't want to press too hard on it and let the force of the icing pull you back. I think here we have a little bit wider tips so you could actually do some zigzagging on the cake if you wanted to. And just kind of something fun. You could actually go in here and do little polka dots. When you do the polka dots like this, you would, it's easier if you just have a little bit of water on your finger and you scrape that little point off. These are some of the fine details that I learned in my sugar arts class here at OSUIT. So anything's possible with icing. <laughs> we also have a rose tip. There's the leaf for the rose. That's, that's it for today, guys. And I just showed you how to uh, take a, just a regular cake and make it something special for you and your friends um, with fondant, coloring, buttercream, and a little bit of love. Thank you.